Welcome to the video. In this video, we will talk about errors, residuals, and the condition number of matrices. So that by the end of this video, you will be able to calculate the residual of a solution. You will be able to bound the solution error of a system of linear equations. And you will be able to determine if the solution to a system of linear equations is susceptible to round off errors. And you will use the condition number to determine this. Okay, so in a prior video, we introduced norms, right? The norm of a vector, the norm of a matrix. And the whole point of this was in the end to have a measure of telling us what the quality of our solution to our system of linear equations will be. So can we use norms to tell us something about this quality of our solution? Well, if we talk about quality of our solution, we should of course talk about an error. And the error vector is defined as our true solution vector minus our numerical solution vector. Um, but truth be told, that's not really a very useful metric because we don't really know the true solution. Right? If we knew the true solution, why would we bother with a numerical solution in the first place? So in general applications, we will not know the true solution, and therefore we won't be able to calculate the error. But how can we ascertain, how can we quantify how good our solution is? Well, here's an alternative. Let's check how close A times my numerical solution is to the right-hand side B. Right? I know that if my numerical solution would be my true solution, right? then a times the true solution is equal to b. But if my numerical solution is not exactly equal to my true solution, I know that a times the numerical solution won't be equal to b, but hopefully it will be close to b at least. And that's what the residual is. The residual is the difference between the true right-hand side b minus a times my numerical solution. Now, can we calculate this quantity, the residual vector? Well, it turns out, yes, we can, because we have everything there in this equation. The right-hand side b is given to us. That's the right-hand side of the system of equation that we're trying to solve. We know the matrix A, because we know the equations that we're trying to solve. And we will have calculated with our Gauss-Jordan algorithm a numerical solution vector. So unlike the error vector, we can actually calculate the residual vector. Now, there's, of course, a relationship between the residual vector and the error vector. So let's derive this. So I'm taking the residual is equal to the right hand side b, but b is equal to a times the true solution vector. So let me just substitute this in minus the rest of the definition for the residual. So minus a times my numerical solution. Now I can factor out the matrix a and I get a times the true solution minus the numerical solution. But the true solution minus the numerical solution is equal to my error vector. So the residual is equal to a times my error vector. Okay. Now, which would mean that the error is equal to a inverse times r, the residual vector. So can't I use this to calculate what the error is? No, not really, because that would require me to calculate a inverse, which in itself will have some errors. But this is a relationship right between the error and the residual. So now going back to the question, can I use norms to tell me something about how good my numerical solution is? And let's start with the equation that the error is equal to a inverse times the residual vector. And let me take a norm of this equation. Just any one of them, any one will do. If you pick one norm, you'll just have to stick with this one norm throughout the entire calculation. So let's take the norm. So I get on the left hand side, the norm of the error vector is equal to the norm of a inverse times the residual vector. And now I'm going to use property number three of norms, which says that the norm of the product is smaller equal to the product of the norms. So this will then be smaller equal to 
the norm of A inverse times the norm of the residual vector. Let's take this other equation that the residual is equal to A times the error vector. And let's take the same norm again of this equation. So I have the norm of the residual vector is equal to the norm of A times the error vector. And I'm going to use the same property, number three of norms. I can write the norm of the product is smaller equal to the product of the norms. So this will then be smaller equal to the norm of A times the norm of the arrow. So let me take this part of the equation and just divide through by the norm of A. And remember, the norm is a real value, right? So I can divide through by this value. And it's positive, so I don't have to change the uh, smaller into greater and vice versa. OK, so what do I have then? Well, I have that my error norm has a lower bound. And that lower bound is the norm of the residual divided by the norm of the matrix A. And the first equation gives me an upper bound on the error norm, namely that the upper bound is the norm of A inverse times the norm of the residual. So I'm able to calculate a lower bound and an upper bound on my error. We found bounds for the error. Good. Um, but what about the relative error? Right? What was the relative error? Uh, it was the true solution minus the numerical solution divided by the true solution. So if we're doing uh, systems of linear equations, we have to take the norm. So the relative error norm is the norm of the error vector divided by the norm of the true solution. Can we find bounds for this as well? OK, so all I need to do, right, if you compare it to the bound equation on the error, all I need to do is I have to divide that equation by the norm of the true solution. So let's do this. I start at the left. So I have the norm of R divided, the residual divided by the norm of A. And I'm now dividing this by the norm of the true solution. I'm just splitting this up a little bit there on the left hand side. That is smaller equal to the norm of the relative error. And on the right of the inequality, I now have the norm of A inverse times the norm of the residual divided by the norm of the true solution. Now, the problem is, of course, that we don't know the true solution. So this is not really that helpful, this equation in the current form. So let me do a trick. Let me multiply this equation by 1. Well, it's not really 1. It's really the norm of the right hand side b divided by the norm of b. Right? So I'm just multiplying by the same thing in the numerator and the denominator. So let's do that on the left. I'm just splitting up these terms a little bit here. And I'm plugging in my b norm over b norm. I'm right? just writing this in there. And then I keep the center term as is, because that's already the norm of my uh, relative error. And I'm going to do the same thing on the upper bound. I'm going to split these terms up a little bit. And then I'm going to multiply in the numerator by the norm of b. And I'm going to divide by the norm of b as well. OK, let me throw this up here on the top of the slide. And now let me use the fact that this right hand side b is a times the true solution. OK, so if b is equal to a times the true solution, let me take the norm of this. So the norm of the right hand side is equal to the norm of a times the true solution. Let me use property 3. So that becomes smaller or equal to right a times the no, sorry the norm of a times the norm of the true solution. Let me divide by the norm of the true solution which means that the norm of A is greater equal to the norm of the right hand side B divided by the norm of the true solution. OK, so now let me use this equation again. But let me solve this for the true solution, linear algebra. The true solution is A inverse times the right hand side vector B. And let me take the norm of this equation. So the norm of the true solution is equal to 
the norm of A inverse times B. Okay, let me use property three again. So that is then smaller or equal to the norm of A inverse times the norm of the right-hand side vector B. So I got this equation here, this inequality, that if I um, solve this for one over the norm of A inverse, I get that that is smaller or equal to or the right-hand side B, the norm of B over the norm of the true solution, is greater or equal to one over the norm of A inverse. Now, why did I do all of that? Well, let's look at our, my original equation that bounded the norm of the relative error. So I got one over the norm of A. That's fine, okay? This is a lower bound. So I can always make this lower bound smaller and the statement would still be true. Okay, how do I make it smaller? Well, I get here an inequality, namely that the term that appears in the lower bound, the norm of B divided by the norm of the true solution, is always greater or equal to one over the norm of A inverse. So if I replace the norm of B divided by the norm of the true solution by one over the norm of A inverse, this statement, this lower bound, will still remain a lower bound. And then this gets multiplied by the ratio of the norm of the residual divided by the norm of the right-hand side B. Okay, so on the left here on this lower bound, I've now gotten rid of the true solution. This is the lower bound for the relative error norm. And on the upper, on the higher bound, on the upper bound, I have the norm of A inverse, okay? And then I have this ratio, the norm of B divided by the norm of the true solution. But I can replace this with something that is larger. What is that something that is larger? Well, it's the norm of the matrix A. So let me plug this in. But that just made the right bound larger, which still makes this statement a true statement. And then the last term I have is again this ratio of the uh, norm of the residual divided by the norm of the original right-hand side B. Okay, so now in this equation, you'll see that there is this product of the norm of A times the norm of A inverse. And that's what we call the condition number of the matrix. It's the norm of A inverse times the norm of the matrix A. So let me use the condition number. So I have one divided by the condition number of A times the ratio of the residual norm divided by the right-hand side norm, B, is the lower bound for the norm of the relative error. And the upper bound is the condition number times the ratio of the norm of the residual divided by the norm of the right-hand side vector, B. And this is now an equation that bounds the relative error. So we can calculate the residual, right? We can calculate its norm. We know the right-hand side vector B. We can calculate its norm. And if we can calculate the condition number of the matrix, then we can have an upper and a lower bound for our relative error. Now, the one caveat is, of course, that in for this to work, we must be able to calculate the condition number. And in order to calculate the condition number, we would need to know the inverse. Now, Strictly speaking, we don't even need to know the inverse itself. All we need to know is the condition number of the inverse. And fortunately, for many uh, matrix equations that we encounter in engineering, we will have a bound on the condition number so we can evaluate and estimate what these upper and lower bounds are. So here's the summary, right? Can we use norms to tell us something about the quality of the solution? Yes, we can. We have an equation that bounds the error norm itself. We have bounds on the relative error norm that uses the condition number. And it's this condition number that tells us something about how susceptible a matrix is to round off errors. If this condition number is large, right, if this value here is large, then it does not mean necessarily that if the residual norm is small, that the relative error norm is small. 
which means that if you have a matrix that has a large condition number, even if you can calculate the residual norm and that value is small, that doesn't mean that the actual relative error of your solution is necessarily small as well. And we can take away from this that a matrix with a lower condition number is less prone to round off errors than a matrix with a larger condition number. So in a nutshell, larger condition numbers are bad. They are more susceptible to round off errors. Meaning they actually will have likely significant round off errors if the condition number of the matrix is large. So what do we do if we have a problem that has a matrix with a large condition number? Well, then we have to do something that's called preconditioning. Uh, we have to transform our system of equations into a linear system of equations that has a lower condition number. That's called preconditioning. That's the topic of some more detailed linear algebra classes and not the topic of this class. What else can we do with the things that we have learned in this class so far? Well, if we want to control round off errors, right, we could lower round off errors by increasing the precision. So those are the two options, preconditioning or increasing the precision um, to calculate the system, the, the solution to the system of linear equations in the case that our condition number of the matrix is very large, indicating that our solution will be susceptible to round of errors. Thank you for watching.